So Alexia, it'd be great if you could please just introduce yourself and also share a bit about your background. So I'm Alexia, I'm a PhD student at Milo, mm -hmm. but uh, I also have been uh, working as a statistician before in the past in the Jewish, uh, the Jewish General Hospital. So my background really is in statistics uh, and computer science, but now I'm going more on the AI side. And you've just participated in a panel here at the summit on GANs. Can you share some of the topics that were discussed in the panel session? Um, one thing that's close to me is the um, democratization of art. The fact that uh, GANs are going to be able to, one day people are going to be able to use GAN to create their own uh, entertainment, their own video, uh, TV show, a comic book, whatever, it means that everyone will be able to create their own art. And how far away are we oh. from that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the big well, question. Well, it's very far. Okay. Well, right now it's mostly going to be help artists, but it's not going to be create uh, something like that. And um, can you share some projects that you're currently working on? So I've just finished working on my project, so give me a little break before <laughs> I start something new, but uh, it's still about how to, to can we, I'm, I think I'm going to work on how can we make GAN more, um, how can we ensure that training doesn't break down, because right now if you train, eventually it's going to break. It's mm. guaranteed to happen. So how can we ensure that? I don't have the answer, but hopefully, maybe I will have it. <laughs> In progress. And what um, is there one main obstacle um, that you find in your current research, or is it kind of multiple challenges that you need to overcome to progress? Um, the, the main thing is, you have all these ideas that look great on paper, but none of them actually work in practice. It's really an experimental science in the end, even, even with theory, you know, it's, you invent a theory, you have to test it mm -hmm. in the real life. Well, in real life, I mean, you know, with uh, data, mm -hmm. but uh, like out of 100 idea, one will work. So it's a lot of trial and error and lots of failed experiments. And do you have any short-term goals that you're striving to work towards with your research? Um, well, in my last paper, uh, I got uh, some hints on, on um, and things that could help, but uh, I don't want to go too much into that, you know, in the complicated, like, in mathematics of it, but, uh, yeah. And apart from um, the sector of art and GANs, which you discussed earlier, are there any other applications that you think are um, kind of near-term future? Yeah, co commercial, commercial, or um, for example, I just met someone today who, who worked for a channel, mm -hmm. who wanted to um, apply makeup. Uh, so you go on the website and then you have, and they see you and then they apply your makeup to you. So you have this customization or let's say you would want to buy clothes. So instead of just seeing the clothes, you see how it's going to fit on you. Mm. So this kind of thing is coming really soon. And are there any other industries that you think will have a major impact or disruption with GANs? So like I mentioned, all the, the industry and beauty are, mm. uh, the, it's going to have a big impact. Otherwise in video games also, like for um, people who do 3D modeling, mm -hmm. if they have a model that creates 3D models for them and then they can tweak it to, to look good or uh, you can use a GAN to animate let's say their character so they don't have to spend hours animating the, the, the character moving around all these small things just making their life easier you know. mm. and here at the event today we've had a lot of discussions on responsible AI and looking specifically at ethical issues and bias and accountability do you have to um, take into account those kind of wider and bigger um, picture? 
Yeah, it's, it's tricky because for me, I'm on the theoretical side, so mm. I don't d deal so much with it, but uh, it's, it's bound to have like really, really problematic uh, things are going to come from GAN and we have to be really careful. We need better laws to, to ensure um, that uh, that the companies work ethically on mm. things and uh, there's the data privacy issue also which is really important for example again train on text data mm -hmm. could maybe reveal address your postal code or something mm. or copyrighted so we need to take this into consideration companies are not gonna use a GAN model if they risk being sued after mm. for so what's the best approach for that? Is it to bring together researchers and policymakers and um, individuals focusing on ethical issues within AI or what do you think would be the best way forward yeah, from your experience? Yeah, yeah, and we need to go quicker because we tend to always wait way too long like with the, the driving uh, the self-driving mm -hmm. cars we're just waiting until bad things happen before we need to, to act fast and that's why there's the Montreal uh, declaration yes, yeah. so far so that's a great thing that we started in Montreal yeah. and what inspired you to work within this field okay so it <laughs> to the sound silly but actually I was playing a video game about uh, AI, AI as well <laughs> A small AI, and then they were talking about the computer scientists who created the AI, who sentient and all. I thought, hmm, I want to be that computer <laughs> scientist. <laughs> it sounds silly, but it just got me into thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But then after it's really, I went into AI specifically because GAN really impressed me. The, the beauty of creating like images that look real, it's just beautiful and so I wanted research and uh, yeah I chose Jan because of the beauty of it. So what do you have planned for next year with your research and your work? So like I said one thing at a time <laughs> I don't plan too much in advance I get these idea over time you build uh, new ideas from your the past and I don't know yet where I'm going yet. And what advice would you give to somebody that's now looking to start a career within AI or specifically to study um, and progress scans? So I have many advice. So the first thing is you don't technically need a PhD or a formal training. People are going to say you need it. It's not really. It's like anything, like any job. If you, you work at it, you're going to learn through working. But we have this system where we need a degree and everything. So the thing is, you don't need a degree, but you should get one <laughs> because it's going to make your life easier. People are going to say, oh, you don't have a PhD. Mm, mm. Not too bad. So I really recommend getting the PhD even if you don't need it. But I do recommend ex trying your own research before the PhD to get a sense of what it is and, and, and having fun. And if you have to take a job uh, before doing a PhD, let's say you cannot get into the PhD, I recommend going for a statistician job because as a statistician, you do the analysis for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you get to do everything, the analysis, the data cleaning, writing papers, writing grants, everything you learn, everything that you would learn in a PhD. So mm -hmm. you, you don't, yeah, so you're way more prepared. And, and the publication are going to help you get in because right now getting in, just getting accepted to a PhD is very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You already need to be a researcher basically to get into the PhD. And then once you are in the PhD, they treat, li treat you like you don't know how to be a researcher, but they mm. basically you need to be. So yeah, get the PhD. <laughs> even if um, you don't need it. And the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, yeah, one advice I would give also is do not get attached to your ideals. Like if something doesn't work, move on. <laughs> like if you spend your old PhD six years on something that worked 
a uh, so so move on like move on please let it go <laughs> it's okay you have to move on you have to learn to go try a different thing and go quick do not get attached and the last thing last thing sorry i have a lot it's just market your your research people are gonna say some people don't like that they saw research is pure thing you're not supposed to market it or something please market it, it you can put it on twitter on reddit on everything because a lot of researchers they, they just try to find a good uh, journal or a conference they say okay i'm gonna spend all this time making sure i'm in a good uh, journal or conference and then if it gets accepted then people are gonna see it mm. but if you do market people are gonna see it before it even get accepted mm -hmm. And people are gonna read your paper, meaning they're gonna cite your paper. It's gonna, uh, it's uh, it's a win-win. You you really have to write paper in the sense that you want people to understand. It's very important for me. It's not a lot of people write paper to get accepted. That the, the only goal is get accepted to a good journal. For me, it's have a paper that people in the field still it's still <coughs> mathematical are gonna understand and gonna read and all gonna see and it's gonna help you in your career uh, yeah. and do, do you or do you have any role models that you wanted to work well, with or <coughs> work because of young good fellow was always <laughs> my main role yeah. model so when I put when I released my paper called Relativistic Gun and I saw Jan who said this is great and he contacted me and talked to me and then started mentoring me I was like <laughs> really uh, <laughs> uh, so but yeah Jan is really my role model in he, uh, he's really uh, for him it's really important the ethics and trying to make sure everyone like from every different community can um, can participate in the research community mm -hmm. yeah and <coughs> how can our um listeners and viewers get in touch with you if they want to find out more uh twitter uh, well if you want any question on email i'm very responsive on email and but you can watch uh, my twitter i post a lot <laughs> and my girlfriend is trying me to maybe go on youtube i don't know if i will do it but <laughs> she's trying to convince me oh maybe, maybe we should do videos with you and we'll see <laughs> watch the space <laughs> yeah great thank you very much